Gavin set out on a very ordinary day with fly rod and camera to capture a very challenging and personal New Zealand fly fishing experience. G'day, I'm Gavin Hurley and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. We're in lovely New Zealand at the moment and uh, it's normally got pristine water where you can see fish from miles away. Unfortunately, it's been pouring with rain, we've had snow, sleet and wind um, and it's really turned the rivers to muck, you know, so it makes it pretty difficult. Because we're here on a short little trip, you've got to make the most of everything. So rather than just give in, we'll find a little creek um, that we can go up, which will be a little bit clearer. We'll look around for some spring creeks, even tackle the lakes. There's always going to be plenty of options. So don't just give in when you see that the water's all pretty dirty. There's always somewhere to find fish in New Zealand. So uh, let's hope we can show you some. So we normally come here and we see crystal clear water and what have you, but this time around it's a little bit dirty and discoloured. So we found like a smaller little creek um, and that's flowing relatively clear by our standards anyway and we can still spot fish. So we've got one over here, he's feeding on nymphs, so just on the other bank there. So we're going to go across there and see if we can't um, put like a couple of tungstens in front of him and hopefully he's going to take one of those. So uh, with a bit of luck, we'll hook up in a sec. snow just died off a little bit now but put the camera away and sure enough that's when uh, I got the fish to take it was just I, I adjusted the flies it maybe it wasn't getting down I think that's the problem a lot of times your flies got to get right down in front of the fish and then you can uh, get him to take it but uh, just over in there we'll get him in in a second give you a closer look As you can see, uh, we've had a little bit of rain and uh, or a little bit of snow as well, so we had to get rid of the uh, camera, unfortunately. Couldn't show you a lot of that. And that's when he took. So, uh, a good solid fish. I'll bring him out of the net. We'll have a good look at him. But uh, he's a good sizable fish. Yeah, it's four and a half. So on a small little stream like this, that's a great fish. Look at that. I mean, that's a... That's a fantastic fish anywhere, and in a stream like this, when it's pretty hard going, makes it all the more worthwhile. So uh, we'll get him back in the water and see if we can't find another one without this rain. Get him back in. Plenty of go left in him, so uh, that's what it's about. When things are a bit hard, think out of the square, look for some other smaller creeks and things like that, and make the most of your time that you've got here. And you're always going to come away with, with something. And uh, we're lucky enough to get a four and a half pounder, and who knows what's around the next bend. So sometimes it pays to get off the couch and get out and have a go. It was interesting um, just after landing that fish that I've gone to, to pack it up and ready to go again. Uh, and I've only left with one nymph. Uh, what we had was two nymphs. We had two tungstens to get down a little bit and uh, one trailing about um, a foot or so behind. When I've gone to hook it up, it's not there anymore. The benefit there is that the fish actually took the, the first nymph. That you have tippet that's lighter at the, the, um, 
the further down it gets. So that little trailing nymph might have got caught on a snag, and because it's weaker, it breaks off, and you still get to land the fish. So make sure when, you, when you're working with tippet, you go heaviest to uh, lightest, uh, and you're not going to come unstuck once you get a decent fish. fish right in that corner. It's going to be too difficult to go with a nymph so what I've done I'll put that blowy back on and hopefully it's big enough and ugly enough create a take. And here he comes He's coming out to have a look at it. Oh! And uh, I presume you saw that on, on, on camera there, but uh, he's come over and he just loved that blowy. He's taken it, felt the weight, hooked him up, and it just got off. <laughs> but again, just getting that take, that's what it's about. Now I think it's very important with the gear that you use in New Zealand, and nothing more important than your set of glasses. I tend to use the Mako because I find they're the best. But the lens colour is very important, particularly with low light like now. I like to use a very light uh, yellow colour. It tends to highlight uh, a lot of the bottom, put a lot of light in and really make spotting the fish a lot easier. And in New Zealand that is just so important. So um, put a lot of time and effort and thought into the glasses you're going to wear and you're going to spot a lot more fish. Now this is exactly what we've been looking for. We've been walking uh, downstream and she's pretty dirty. But we found like an incoming uh, little stream here that's crystal clear. That'll be because that's a little spring creek, so it's a short distance uh, and it's, it hasn't been discolored from all the rain and runoff. So uh, you can just see over uh, my left side is the, the main um, river and that's filthy. We're gonna make our way up the um, spring creek and hopefully we can see some. I mean, that's what we're after. We need to be able to see the fish before it sees us and also with clear water they need to see the fly so hopefully we can achieve that in your crystal clear creek like this one.